Hello, everyone, and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. And <laughs> you that. You changed three octaves in one sentence. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Long. Folks, this is the COVID edition. <laughs> this is the COVID edition of Long for Truth. God is speaking to his people. If you take time to read this book, you'd realize that everybody in this book talked with God. Even Satan and donkeys talk to God. The only ones that probably aren't talking to God these days are... But one day you're going to shake your fist in God's face and you're going to say, God, why didn't you warn me? And he's going to say, you sat there and you made fun of Jim Baker all those years. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Sitting next to me is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. Does it seem like every time you turn around some popular pastor, teacher or preacher is saying something like this. Jesus told me that. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say. And the Lord has already spoken to me about this. The Lord spoke one word to me. And so I started to pray about this, and this is what God gave me. So in this video, we are going to be examining several people, especially a guy named Kevin... Zadai. Zadai. And Kevin actually um, had an experience where he was on the table at the dentist and he went to heaven for 45 minutes and he spent 45 minutes with Jesus. More than so many other teachers that we checked out for this video, Kevin Zadai very frequently uses the term Jesus told me or Jesus said in his teaching videos. I think um, it lends an authority to him, mm -hmm. like gives him a lot of authority, but probably we watched three or four videos and got a dozen clips of him claiming that God told him yeah. this or Jesus told him that. My body started to glow and so I stepped back and I thought, well, why is my body glowing? And I looked down and I had a body. Uh, so I couldn't figure out why my physical body was starting to turn into this beautiful body and I realized it was my resurrection body and uh, my mm -hmm. face transformed and I looked like myself but I was at a perfection state and so it took me back and uh, I was glowing and then I knew by the Spirit of God that that was my resurrection body, that I was going to get that back and I saw uh, the most beautiful details in my face. I looked like an angel. And so I just simply without hindrance, I just said, I look beautiful because I, I was at perfection. Mm. And so when I said that, I heard a man's voice, which was another man's voice that was not accounted for. It was behind I me. Look beautiful. And this voice said, this is like what you look like to me all, all the time. time. And I turned around and it was the King of glory. It was Jesus Christ, the Messiah. <laughs> You look like that to me all the time. I think I saw him on a Friends episode. <laughs> no, you look like that to me all the time. All right. So uh, that that's uh, one Kevin Zadai clip. Here's another one for you. This is an exciting time that we live in. I was sent back knowing that we were going to be one of the few generations left. If not the last, we were going to be one of the last. There was not much time left. Jesus told me that. He said, there's not a lot of time left. He said, it's time is short. He said, I'm preparing to come back for my bride. But Jesus did not know exactly when he was coming back, but he told me there was a great harvest coming in. Here's Kenneth Copeland. I've, I've gone into a, a very, how can I say this, Lord? More than just a little exercise program. And uh, I'm in very serious training, praise God. I'm working out hard. And I heard this. He said, Kenneth, I sacrificed my body for yours. He said, now you are sacrificing your body for mine. I didn't want to do that, but then I have a mandate before me. Should the Lord tarry, I will live and preach this gospel till I'm 120 years old. What this kind of stuff does to others and the people in the body of Christ, genuine Christians who really want to know, okay, how do I hear God? How do I hear him speak? 
First of all, the Bible makes it very, very clear that we hear God speak. We know for a fact that God is speaking to us by opening up his word and reading it. And we've said that over and over again here. The Bible is how we are 100 percent certain Mm -hmm. that God is speaking to us. And God is God, right? He can do anything he wants to do. If he wants to speak in an audible voice, he certainly can do that. And if he wants to speak to your heart, he certainly can do that. He's God, but he has not promised that that is how we are going to hear from him. How he has promised that we are going to hear from him is in his word. So, Robin, um, we have a verse we were going to just read really quickly. I think we're in Hebrews chapter one, starting in verse one. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. That is the one way we can be positive. Mm -hmm. Positive. It is God's voice, is if we are reading God's word. Other than that, with the pastors and teachers and everyone saying, God said to me, I think we always have to weigh it against what God's word says. Mm -hmm. And there will always be that wondering, like, did God really say that to you? Yeah. So you can never really say with 100% certainty, well, that was the voice of God. He never promises to speak to us in an inward impression. He never promises to speak to us in an audible voice, but he does promise to be there for us in his word. He promises us that we will hear his voice when we read his word. True. Do we have any other clips? Yeah, so this is uh, Keenan Bridges. But I was phasing back in, and as that, as, as that was taking place, I saw the face of Jesus. And the only thing I can tell you is when I looked in his eyes, they were like flames of fire, full of love, full of truth. It's like he was looking right through me. There was not anything that was false in him. He was just the physical, and spiritual embodiment of all truth. And he just gazed at me. And as he looked at me, I heard these words. He said, tell my people there's so much more. Whenever I'm alone, when I get by myself, that's when I start hearing from God. And so I had already heard a few things and I'd written them down. And then I got into the bathtub. And then God's beginning to speak to me. And and the words are coming. And I have a pencil and a pad, but did you ever try to write in the bathtub with a pencil and a pad? Pa- nope. The pad melts, you know, it gets wet, you know, it just, it just doesn't work. And so uh, I had my phone there, which is always this my cell phone. So I just pressed the button, Zach's name, zip, he comes on. I said, Zach, take dictation. <laughs> <laughs> I said, God's speaking to me, and I got one to write it now. Mm-hmm. One thing I've learned is now, and that's the word I want to give you again for this year, is now. When Carol and I were really seeking the Lord, that uh, he spoke much intimacy to my heart. Just broke my heart, really, the same as what's happening to you. And then he said to me this, he said, John, you know, many of my people have married me for my money. And it's the same kind of thing, isn't it? These teachers are teaching their people that God is just, just, I mean, it's, it's just a normal thing, just, just a normal thing for the everyday Christian to just hear God in their heart or even in an audible voice. Sometimes we have done videos on this channel showing, um, how, People other than Christians claim to hear from God. So, for example, there is the uh, Gnostic woman in one of our Jesus Calling videos where we play this woman who is an she's a Gnostic. She is a Gnostic instructor instructor, and she is talking about her experience in her bedroom when she was having her quiet time and Jesus comes and speaks to her. She calls him her God. Once in um, in a gift that I received through a meditation, I asked questions to my God in prayer. And the message that he gave me, you know what he said? Little by little, I will reveal myself to you, but you need to meet me here every day. And that was like, a whoa, okay. (laughs) And then, you know, 
Some days I meet him there, and other days I go, God, I'm so tired, and I fell asleep through my meditation, or God, I'm so busy, and, and I have to constantly remember that. Meet me here every day, and I will reveal myself to you little by little. And that's what it is. That's prayer. If the Gnostics and even other religions, including the Mormons, are doing this and saying that they hear from God, I mean... It's something you would want to be very, very careful about. Mm -hmm. um, the Mormon missionaries uh, that uh, have, you know, mm. told me specifically, you want to know that the Book of Mormon is true? Then this is what you do. You take the Book of Mormon and you begin reading it and ask the Holy Spirit to give you the burning in the belly. I mean, come on. Um, so this kind of stuff is practiced by non-Christians as well. Here is um, my favorite clip. Uh, James Call. And I was given a word what my assignment would be. Moving forward, no matter the cost. Hmm. I was told that heaven knew and that I was going to be growing in a testimony on this side to be a model for this generation on how to keep moving forward no matter the cost. It was incredible. And I wake up hearing the voice of our Father God speaking. Would you like to know what I heard? Yes. <laughs> this is what we're waiting on for this particular broadcast. I heard this. As I came out of that exhilarating dream, I heard, welcome to the era of favor. Welcome to the era of favor that those who have sowed in tears will reap in joy. But here is, here's the final word I heard. Welcome to the beginning of the great harvest. So that was Robin's least favorite clip. Uh, that was James Gall. Um, here is uh, Troy Black. Now, you've seen Troy Black if you guys watch Fighting for the Faith. Um, Troy Black is often um, is often featured as one of the false prophets there on Prophecy Bingo. All right. So this is Troy Black. A little bit of a note here. Last time, we, uh, last time we used him in a Prophecy Bingo, he tried to copyright strike us and it didn't hold. <laughs> This is the newest, as far as I know, this is the newest video that just came out for December. So um, he had a vision of Santa Claus, and um, he's going to give you the words that the Holy Spirit told him after seeing this vision. <laughs> All right. So I was worshiping the Lord, and this was on August 3rd of this year. And the Lord began to give me this vision. And so I actually start seeing this vivid image of Santa Claus. So uh, the Lord is not making a commentary directly about this imagery, but instead he's using the imagery to paint a picture of something. So I started to see Santa Claus in a sleigh firing an arrow up over a hill. And then I knew in that moment when I saw the arrow flying that he was firing it into the future. And then I heard that song from Space Jam, the movie, um, the fly into the future song. It's like, uh, <clears throat> I want to fly like an eagle till I'm free. Fly like an eagle, let my spirit carry me. Okay, y'all had to suffer through that. So that's the song. I started to hear that, and then I saw a vision of a rainbow flag, like hanging. And then I heard this phrase from the Holy Spirit. He said, they're taking strides ahead, but I'm pulling people out and setting them free for a purpose. People in the world are going to need hope more than ever before. Yeah, I didn't know God gave visions using the Steve Miller band song, but and Santa yeah. Claus and Santa Claus and Space Jam and Space Jam. <laughs> Folks, um, just to reiterate, read the Bible. God doesn't promise to speak to us in dreams, visions or audible voices or inward impressions, but he does promise to speak to us through his word. And we just want to reiterate that to you. Thanks for watching.